Welcome back to my workshop. I'm Naoto, head knife sharpener at Knifeware. We recently made a video, top 10 beginner knife sharpening mistakes. And when we made the list, we realized there are way too many mistakes for one video. These are more advanced and may apply to you if you have been sharpening knives for a few months or years. Without further ado, here are 10 more common sharpening mistakes. Number 11, not checking the knife before sharpening. This is something I do with every single knife I sharpen, but it's not super obvious thing to do. Steel can bend over time, either naturally or because of the pressure applied to it in use. You can make sure the knife is straight, otherwise grind in the bent spots can cause the profile to change or make the knife very difficult to sharpen. If you have the bent knife, check out my video on straightening knives to learn how. Number 12 avoid contamination when you're finishing your knife with fine grit like 4000 8000 or even 10,000 grit stones you do not want to use the water from your reservoir that you keep your stones in or that to collect the water from the sharpening this can contaminate the grit and may not get as fine of the edge as you want number 13 using the wrong grit of stone. I often see people starting the process at too high of a grit or finishing on too fine of a stone. When the knife is dull, the process is easiest if you start somewhere around 220 to 400 grit. You can start on the finer stone like 1000 grit if you're just doing a touch up, but for properly dull knife, something rougher will work much faster. When you're first establishing the edge, you need to grind a certain amount of steel away. Whether you use a rough stone or fine stone, the amount of grinding is the same. So starting on the rougher stone makes the process much quicker and save you a lot of fatigue. When you're finishing the knife, you want to make sure the grit is appropriate for the steel you're working with. Softer steel such as German knives can be sharpened to 1000 or even 2000 grit, but anything finer than that will likely to go dull very quickly. Japanese knives can go up to 4000 to 8000 or even 10,000 grit, but it depends on what you are cutting. You may not want to bring it up to ultra fine like 8000. If you want to deep dive on stone grits, I did a really thorough guide while back to every stone in my collection. Number 14, using the wrong stone. This is slightly different from the previous point. This is about hardness. Not all stones are created the same, even with the same grit. There are hard stones and soft stones. If you try to finish your micro bevel with very soft stones, you will gouge into the stone pretty easily and we'll have to spend hours fixing the stone. Contrarily, if you try to get a nice so-called Kasumi finish with very hard stone, you will have trouble getting that nice consistent Kasumi. Number 15, not maintaining a consistent profile. An important part of sharpening is to keep the same shape to your knife edge as the knife initially had. This is called a profile. There are a few ways this can happen. When you first learn, you may be inclined to scoop at the tip and the heel, but this can cause them to round out given an overly curved profile. Another way is over sharpening in one spot, which can cause a round profile to have a flat spot or a flat nakiri profile to have an inward curve. This can happen when you don't follow the curve of the blade properly. Sorry, the... This can happen when you don't follow the curve of the blade properly and sharpen it flat. Like I said in my first video, keep your stones flat. Number 16, not 
thinning the knife. We see this a lot. Someone has been sharpening their own knives for years and eventually it stops cutting altogether. They can keep sharpening, but the knife won't hold an edge. This is because the knife is too thick and isn't able to glide smoothly through the food. When I sharpen a Japanese knife, I first lay the knife flat on the blade, then sharpen it. This assures the knife continues to cut like it did when it was a brand new. You can learn more about thinning knives in my how to thin a knife video. Number 17 over or under thinning. While it is important to thin your knives, it's equally important to thin them the right amount. If you're unsure, stay on the side that is not enough. It's a pain, but you can always do it again or thin it more next time. If the edge is too thick, it won't cut as nicely, but if it's too thin, it can chip very easily. Usually I check if it's thin enough by simply take out a carrot and cutting into it see if it cuts smoothly and won't break the carrot. Number 18, underestimating the power of coarse stone. Many people skip the coarse stone and jump straight into the medium grit stone like 1000. If you are touching up your final micro bevel, it is fine. But when it comes to full service maintenance, like chip removal and thinning, the core stones are the must. Not only do they perform heavy lifting, they also build a foundation. Yes, a foundation of the knife. You want to spend enough time on the core stone to make sure there is no damage left on the blade or thin your knife properly or fix the profile. If you do skip any of this on the core stone, you will have to come back to see the core stone again. I've done a few times that while I was on the fine grit, I found a small nick left on the blade that I needed to go back to see my 220 grit stone to start over again. Number 19, not putting koba or micro bevel. This is a very common mistake that many Japanese chefs make. They often sharpen only the bevel. This kind of sharpening will result in super steep sharp edge with an edge angle of about like eight degrees. At this thinness, the edge is extremely fragile and will chip with very little force. Putting a micro bevel is like stitching up the end of fabric so that it won't frill out the threads. Just remember to put 10 to 15 degree micro bevel from both sides for Japanese knives and 20 to 22 and a half degrees for non-Japanese knives. One research shows that they put in a micro bevel barely changes the sharpness, but significantly increase the durability and longevity of the edge. Number 20, not understanding the knife construction. This is especially important for Japanese knives. Most Japanese knives are made with clad or lamination of different hardness of steels. And if the wrong type of steel comes to the edge, the knife won't be able to form a proper sharp edge. Also, if you don't know the construction of the Japanese single bevel knives, you may sharpen them like other Japanese knives and end up ruining the knife. I hope these tips will help you become a better sharpener. If you want to learn more, check out my sharpening technique playlist. And if you really want to nerd out, watch my monthly live show, Naoto's Nerdy Power Hour, and we'll hope you, these tips will make you a better sharpener. Leave a comment below if I miss anything or if you want to know more about sharpenings. Thanks for watching.